What is going on guys, the Fire Reaper here, coming at you with another weekly Moab commentary with the Army Life series still continuing. Last week where I left you guys off, uh, I was at the Armory after I got dropped off, just getting all the paperwork and everything situated before I headed down to Mississippi. And that's how we're going to be starting off this week, what actually happened right before Mississippi and steps at Mississippi. In today's video guys, this is uh, going to be on hard hat. I was using a gold MP7 suppressed with extended mags. I believe at the end of this video I will be going 44 and 1. And there's more than one thing that actually happens during this video. So I'll let you guys just figure out what happens. And hopefully you guys will like it and enjoy it. Now I remember the last day in my home state before I actually deployed down to Mississippi. Uh, it was a pretty crappy day. It was a little bit of a drizzle. And I had my fiance girlfriend at the time come down to actually see me and uh finally she went down she went home the, about two hours before we actually got on the buses and boarded and from there we boarded the buses and started heading down toward the airport to get ready to actually leave and it was kind of funny because where the airport was it was about five minutes away from my home and I just remember having in the back of my mind just like, you know, I really wish I could just go home and forget going on this trip, you know, but it was something that I had to do and something that I did sign up for. So I really, there at the time, once I finally got to that point where boots were on the ground at the airport and everything and you knew where you were walking towards, it was just about that time where you just realized, hey, look, it's happening now. It's, uh, time to go just give your home state one good last look before you board that plane and go off to what is about to happen a new page a new chapter in your life so now we're at the airport uh, sent my family members a few messages talked to them on the phone and I know I saw them I uh, got to see him for just a couple more minutes then as soon as that happened I turned around and boarded the plane uh, really didn't know what to do or what to think at the time when we got on the plane I know it was kinda how the car ride was with your family everybody was really silent like all the soldiers it wasn't just one person it wasn't like really a lot of talking I guess especially for the newer people whose first deployment it was because they don't know what to expect the people that were already deployed before they were a little bit of talking but it wasn't too much to where it was actually you could hear it you could hear a whisper every now and then or maybe a chuckle from somebody trying to crack a joke to spark the mood up but other than that it was just a really quiet boarding process as far as uh, getting onto the plane and heading down towards Mississippi so now the flight was on everybody was on the plane everybody's flying down eventually after uh, can't remember the amount of flight time it was because I do remember that I did fall asleep because the past few days when I was up at the armory I really wasn't getting that great of sleep I wasn't actually really able to get my mind adjusted quite yet I wasn't able to get my head in the game as everybody says for anything big that's about to happen an event uh, I just couldn't grasp what was going on and I had trouble sleeping as you guys can see before I continue, this is the first Moab and shockingly enough it's not me. So keep an eye out and you guys will understand what's going to be going on. So anyway, I finally fell asleep on that plane. And when I woke up, we were landing. And everybody was standing up. Everybody got off the plane. And uh, from there we got onto a bus and started heading down towards the good old Camp Shelby, Mississippi. Alright guys, so now we've got everything unloaded uh, and loaded onto the bus and now we're actually heading towards Camp Shelby, Mississippi. Now before anybody asks, uh, Camp Shelby, Mississippi is an Army National Guard place. That's where Army National Guard people go and that's the reason why I talk about armories, things like that because the uh, reason why is because I was part of the Army National Guard and for all the people that were new to this series is I enlisted between my junior and senior year of high school and I really didn't have a choice to go into full time which now at the time once I look back at it I do regret it on account of you really need it's a lot more difficult 
because you do have to keep yourself mentally and physically fit even when you're not at your weekend drills for the Army. So finally, after we get to Mississippi, we start unloading all our gear. Uh, we put it all into the barracks, and that's when they started issuing out squad leaders and platoon sergeants and everything. And as you guys can see, there's my Moab. But the game isn't over yet. Uh, a, this is a longer commentary because I know that a lot of you have asked for it. And so I'm going to try to give it to you guys as much as I can. And hopefully y'all are going to enjoy the outcome of this whole entire game. Alright guys, just so y'all understand what's going on. Before I continue with this commentary, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you guys what a few of the army terms I just said were. Uh, the platoon, platoon leaders, and platoon sergeants. So, platoon. Uh, what a platoon is, it usually consists of about 15 people, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending on the size of the troop. Troop is how we had it. There was troops, then it turned into platoons, and then it turned into squads, and then it turned into teams. So, I'm going to just go ahead and tell you about the platoons real quick. The platoon leader is the person that is in charge of the platoon. Go figure, that's why it's called a platoon leader. Then you have platoon sergeants. The reason why there's platoon sergeants is because a platoon leader doesn't talk to anybody lower than a platoon sergeant. Only reason why is because they have so much to do. It's kind of like uh, how you have a boss at work. You always have somebody else to go to before you go to that boss. Either the manager, you don't want to just go straight to the store manager or the district manager. You want to just speak to the lowest ranking person and try to do chain of command. And that's be, that's where all of the army standards really go by is chain of command. You want to always do that. So the platoon sergeants are in charge of the soldiers. They're the ones that interact with the soldiers mo most of all at any time of the day. And the only time that a platoon leader is talking to the soldier of the lower rank is if there's an actual issue that can't be solved by a platoon sergeant. And it gets carried to him. Well, remember guys, the reason why I deployed is because my unit needed people. Uh, in a, another type of situation, if the unit doesn't need people and you just get out of basic or something like that, you probably won't get called up to go because A, Uncle Sam doesn't want to pay your paycheck. Uh, n nobody wants to pay your paycheck. Nobody wants to pay your bills. They just want to really not use you unless they really direly need to. And this was a situation where they needed to. Uh, the people that were overseas, you will find out their work shifts, like what they were actually doing when I get there. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about it once I get there. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and stick with what's going on at Mississippi. So I don't keep bouncing back and forth with you guys. So... Going from there, uh, we finally unpacked and we were called out to formation. Formation is basically roll call, just to, for everybody to know what that means. All got called up to formation. We we're in our designated platoons, squads, whatever you want to call it right now. And when we finally did all that, we got to meet our acting first sergeant and the leader of our troop and what he did from there is he explained to us what was going to be going on what we were going to be expecting for the next few weeks because we were there for almost a month from november till about december the end of december and what you have to do is you got to remember guys you got to go through class uh to understand a lot of the uh, military stuff that's what basics for but you also have to do refreshment courses like you have to in for it or computers because there's always something else new coming out and like a little fun fact I'm going to tell you guys, and this is probably where I'm going to end the video for this week, you guys. Uh, a Humvee, for example. A military Humvee, it doesn't require keys to turn the car on, or the Humvee on, excuse me. It just requires a turn of ignition. It's just a turn. It's a little knob that you turn and it turns on. It note saying that the Humvee works because a lot of the Humvees, especially for the National Guard, isn't in great of shape. But guys, this is it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, make sure, like always, follow me on my Twitch. And uh, make sure to subscribe, guys. I really appreciate it. Appreciate what all you guys are doing for watching my videos. <laughs> Later, guys.